very privileged to work with an international construction development company called Skanska. They're a $20 billion a year company based in Stockholm. Uh, they have four business streams, residential development, commercial development, uh, construction, and civil. They um, uh, operate in 11 countries, uh, primarily Europe, Latin America, United States. I was brought on board seven years ago after they had finished acquiring a number of companies, about 10, and we were uh, challenged with rolling up those 10 different established local regional companies into a single national brand with common systems, a common culture, and uh, to grow the company exponentially. And uh, I'm very pleased to say that, that we've made great progress. We're the eight or 10 different companies now uh, all operate uh, in 33 different offices around the United States uh, as one company, one balance sheet with a common goal. And uh, it began with having the right culture. And we set out some uh, very specific, uh, 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 I guess you'd call it guidelines, as well as we put some process and procedures in place that really streamlined uh, the operations and, and uh, reduced overhead and made everybody uh, just so much more uh, effective. <laughs> You know, I wish I would have realized the value of, of going on and getting additional education and, and learning, particularly in business. And I didn't do this until a later uh, part of my career. I wish I would have started earlier. Understanding organizations, understanding accounting, understanding uh, the communications, the marketing side of business, uh, instead of just the technical aspect. So. I did go back and get my uh, MBA uh, for the simple reason I wanted to understand better organizational management because the, the, the uh, world was changing and changing radically with uh, all these various bills and laws relative to uh, ethics and, and uh, uh, human resource issues as well as organizational tax structures and corporate structures. And it was just important if you wanted to advance my career, I needed to know more than just the technical side of construction or design. I have continuously, though, uh, uh, learned. I'm continuously going to programs. I've been to seven modules at Harvard that have been more on leadership and management of people and uh, more strategic thinking and, and, and negotiating. And then I have had a chance to go over to Europe to IMD. And again, that was all about critical thinking and leadership development. And through programs like that, it gives you a better perspective of the world. Uh, and uh, global, international uh, 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 movements. Uh, because, let's face it, in today's world, uh, and particularly in Washington, D.C., uh, it's very much a global marketplace. And uh, unless you have a full understanding of the, the whole, it's hard to really focus on Washington, D.C. and the metro area. The class is focused on uh, two or three primary areas. One is understanding organizational structure. Uh, two, looking at management theory. There's some great uh, examples in theory out there, uh, how companies have worked, how they need to work, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, and then probably most emphasis on the t is placed on the 21st century leader. What does that look like? Because the world has changed. When you talk about Gerald Hines or Trammell Crow or Bruce Mosler uh, or Larry Hurst, these are gentlemen that were part of the old regime of development. But you know, those, those uh, gentlemen all had tremendous leadership traits. It's important to learn from them. But going forward, we need to look at the new 21st century leader in development, which uh, takes a whole different perspective on uh, globalization, on uh, sustainability, uh, on uh, people in general, particularly the diverse people that we now have working for us. So we look at leadership traits. We use a couple books. One is uh, uh, called uh, Leader at a Higher Level. It's a Ken Blanchard book. Really a neat book. It looks at four different ways of managing and leading people. And then it also looks at uh, very intently uh, the servant leadership model and developing a leadership point of view. Every aspiring leader needs to understand what are the values that drive them and what are the goals that are most important to them, and you create a leadership point of view around that. By sharing your leadership point of view with your employees, they better understand what drives you, what motivates you, and what you value. 
so that, that's really a neat uh, module and we do some self-testing and we help uh, the students develop their leadership point of view. That coupled with looking at uh, more than 150 great uh, real estate, construction, design oriented leaders and the traits that have made them successful. Hopefully we'll give the student uh, a very clear picture of uh, what works, what doesn't. But more than that, to formulate in their own mind at an early stage of their career the direction they want to go. I find a lot of students today are aimlessly out there taking classes, not sure what's important, what's of value, what direction they want to go. I believe this course will give them a clear vision as to how they need to guide their leadership style, but also their career. There were uh, two, possibly three gentlemen that uh, influenced me. One was at an early age, uh, and this gentleman uh, cared about his employees and cared about their career growth at an early age, and uh, was the one that enabled me to go from superintendent to project engineer, project manager, to estimator, to business development, allowed me to try different avenues so I could find my niche. The second gentleman uh, was over the last 20 years, and uh, 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 Bob Moss was uh, without a fat, without question one of the best leaders because he had vision, but he also uh, cared about the employee. And it wasn't just about him, but it was about the overall health of the of the organization and the employees. He created an environment that was very much like a family, and everybody relied on each other and depended on each other for the success of the company. There weren't any right, you know, just a star that the company was built around, it was everybody. But he cared about the employee, and he cared about the development. And then the third gentleman uh, would have to be uh, at a much higher level, and that was Larry Hirsch, and he was chairman of uh, Syntex. And just watching him uh, operate and manage uh, the, the multi-billion dollar company that it was from afar, but I gained a lot of insight by his style, and again, his foresight and strategy they never would expand their business unless they had people already trained within their business to take over the expansion. Interesting philosophy versus some companies that hire from outside, this man believed in developing from within. And so those three uh, gentlemen uh, really had an impact on my uh, career. Be a self-starter. Uh, take the initiative. Uh, too many people wait for things to happen. Uh, in development, you can't. You've got to go make things happen. You have, to, you have to be observant. You have to be aware of your surroundings. You have to take risk. And development is all about being a self-starter and taking risks. And not being afraid of the word no. And uh, there'll be a lot of doors that will shut. There'll be a lot of questions that are, are, are in your mind saying, is this really the, the right direction? But you, perseverance is another key word. You've got to just keep at it and keep at it.